Hi, and welcome to Just In Time with Exact Time. Shannon here, um, your Arcoro uh, trainer specialist here. First off, thank you for joining. I've got my little Christmas sweater. I hope you guys are ready for Christmas and the holidays. I'm still in denial. I still have a bunch of unwrapped Christmas presents and I keep waiting for the shelf on the elf to do me a solid and wrap them, but he hasn't done that. So wishing you a very safe holiday, stay healthy as well. So without further ado, we're going to go over crews and groups today. So um, let's get started. All right, so crews and groups. So if you remember uh, going through categories, categories was a great way to organize your data, your employees, your location and cost codes. Um, but it was strictly mainly for the dashboards for reporting purposes to organize your employees and, and filter out certain levels of information. Well, Cruise and Groups does pretty much the same thing, but from a mobile app standpoint. So we're going to be looking at this today. We're going to be looking at adding a group, editing a group, deleting a group, how to show and stop the group in the mobile app, enabling and removing groups. And then we're going to show how the groups get set up and connect, how it's going to look, how exact time mobile users will see the groups and also clocking in and out for crews, which we kind of use interchangeably with groups where you can clock in a whole crew of employees at once. And this is an optional, definitely a supervisory feature. Okay, I know this looks a little overwhelming, but I wanted to show you this so we could kind of break everything down. And remember, all of this information is on our support site website. So if you're logged on to the exact time dashboard, go to help and support site and then type in groups and crews and you will see a lot of this information. But kind of wanted just to show you this and then we're gonna break it down as we go. Okay, so we've got the group tabs up the top. You can do your employee groups, location groups, cost code groups, and we do have equipment groups. So if you deal with a lot of different machinery and you want to keep track of that, you can have your employees clock into a specific type of equipment. So A is the different types of groups. B, we have a drop down. So once you do create a group, you can go into those groups and modify C to edit those groups. D, showing these groups in exact time mobile. You will hear me throughout this whole presentation how important this is. A um, lot of support in the beginning is why is, isn't my groups showing up on the mobile app? If this box is not checked, that is the reason. So you could do all this work of adding all your groups and if you don't have that checked and you want it to show in the mobile, it will not. How to add a group, delete a group, search for an entity within the group and the list of entities that can be added into that group. See, it's not too bad. It looks bad, but it's really not. So let's kind of break it down a little bit, how to add a group. So once you're in the exact time dashboard, you're gonna to go to manage. Just underneath categories, we have groups. So you're going to add what type of group you want. Again, employees, locations, cost codes, and equipments. You're gonna click add, and then you're going to name that group. The naming of the group is what's going to be shown on the mobile app. So you want to make sure that it's something that if you locations and Costco, something that your employees will be familiar with and they will know what that group means. So you want to name it something that's familiar. Uh, keep it definition to your type of business, right? Once you've added that group, then you're going to hit save. Now that you've saved the group, now we want to add what's going into that group, what entities are going into that group. So on the example on the screen is an employee group. So it would have a list of all your active employees. You simply 
check the box next to the employee that you want to belong to that group. Um, location, same thing, cost codes all work the same. Check the box, make sure it's checked, and that will be included in that group. As you know, or as you can see at the bottom, there is no save button. Um, once you've clicked or unclicked an entity, it's automatically synced up. There is no save button. We do get that a lot too. So as long as you've clicked it or unclicked it, you do not need to save anything. Again, make sure you have that box checked to show this group in exact time mobile, right? So if you build a group and maybe you're not ready for it to be on the mobile, you can build your groups ahead of time. And once they come pertinent, just come back here and make sure you check that box. Okay. All right, so now we have our group. It's very important to keep your groups updated. If you add a new employee, if you add a new location, cost code or equipment, you want to make sure you update your groups accordingly as well. So when your employees are out on the field, they have the most updated list. For example, location, we finished at location A and it's no longer going to be in that group. I wanna go into my group, I need to edit it uncheck that location and then save it. Now when my employees go back into that group, that location will not be there because it's not an active location. Same thing for employees. Employees groups are really used for the group check-in. Um, so if you're not having a supervisor's clock in a group of employees, you probably won't use this you will use your locations and your cost codes and your equipment, okay? But when you do employees and you want the crews to be checked in, then you want to make sure that they are checked. And as an employee, I can belong to two separate groups. If I am, for example, a floater employee and I go between employee group A and employee group B, B, I can belong to both of those groups so that you both have visibility on me. So not like before, like policies or categories where I can only belong to one. In an employee group, I can belong to more than one group. Like I said, if I'm floating between uh, managers and groups. Okay. Um, the seek frequency, when you add a mobile group and you check that box, right? How does that get to the mobile app? One of two ways. In your manage mobile settings on the dashboard towards the bottom, you have a seek frequency. You have daily, four hours, two hours, and manual. Okay, so what that means is anytime you add a new location or cost code, um, if you have two hours, for example, that's checked every two hours, the system is going to send a sync to all the registered mobile apps with any updated information. Even if there's not, they're still going to ping that phone. So if I add a group and I have two hours of syncing, then that group will be available approximately two hours. Daily syncing is if you're only doing um, additions every now and again. So if I add a group, a location group today, for example, that location group will be available tomorrow. The sync happens at night when there's not a lot of activity, and then that sync happens without you having to do anything. But let's say you add a group and you want your people to see that location group right now. On the mobile app, if you go to the menu button, and you scroll all the way down, you will see a sync button. You can click that. That is a forced clink, clink, forced sync between the mobile and the exact time just for that mobile device only. The one that I just talked about previously that's under mobile settings will send a sync to all mobile phones that have the exact time app on it. Okay, deleting a group, very simple, but wanted to go through it just in case. You wanna click on the group that you want to delete. There is that delete group uh, button, and then also a confirmation 
to make sure that that group has been deleted. Want to make sure that there's no confusion that these employees or locations aren't deleted from the system, they are just deleted from that group. So if I delete a location group and I go back into manage and locations, I will still see those locations there. I've just deleted the group. So I just want to make sure that's understood by deleting a group. You're not actually deleting locations or Costco's or employee. You're just deleting that particular group. All right. So enabling and removing groups for mobile apps. We've kind of gone through this, but I just want to make sure it's super clear. So we're going to go into manage groups, pick our groups that we are going to enable. We want to make sure we have all our entities checked. And then we want to make sure that we have that show check button that it will show on the exact time removals. Um, again, you can here edit the group if you want to do it or remove a group. Just remember those syncs will automatically happen on the dashboard or you can force that sync if you need to. If I've had this before in a location group, let's say you do a, a location group and that, that one location you remove from the group or you don't want it part of the group at all, so you uncheck that button. And let's say you go back and you want to re introduce that location group then all you have to do is come back in here and just click that button to show this edit group um, in the mobile and that group will still be there only time it will not be there is if you completely delete the group so if i have a group and i don't want them to see it but i might introduce it again later then just uncheck that box instead of deleting the group that way everything's still there you might just have to update some of your locations or employees at least you're not going from scratch okay so when you have an employee group and you want your supervisors to see this group, then you need to do a couple of things. So in Exact Time Connect, you want to go under their um, employee profile and you want to go to the second tab that says View Sets. Um, exact Time is really big on view sets on allowing people to see or not see certain people. It defaults to only themselves, but if you want your supervisors to be able to see crews and groups, not only clock in for them, but actually see them, then you need to allow them to see them in their employee profile. So here you're going to go and you're gonna to go to selected employee groups. And as a supervisor, I can see more than one group if you allow me to do that. Just like an employee can belong to more than one group, as a supervisor, I can see more than one group. So if you have this enabled, you wanna make sure you come here and make sure their view sets are accordingly. Because if you're getting your supervisors, I can't see any of the groups. This is where you want to first go and troubleshoot why they can't see it. And the second place you want to go, you got it. You want to go to that checkbox. Make sure that checkbox is checked. Show this um, group in the employee mobile. Um, I did add a link here to employee view sets. So if you want to do a little bit more deeper dive on how this affects views, please do so. Okay, so how will mob mobile's user see groups? So we're this we're looking from a supervisory view because you've allowed me to see the cleanup crew and the demo crew. So when I log into the mobile, I'm going to hit go, I'm going to hit see my crews, and then I'm going to be able to go into each of those groups. Okay. Um, this is sticky like most of our products so if i'm in one group and i want to see another one i just simply need to back out and then select the next group um, please note that the mobile version 2.63 or lower it doesn't respect the view sets this was 
built a little bit before then. So you can see all employees, right? Even though my view set is set to only see those two groups. Well, if you're on mobile version 2.64 or later, you will now only see the groups that you are allowed to see. You will not see all that employees anymore. So be mindful of that. If you need to update your mobile version, please go to the support site. It will walk you through updating the mobile version. But just make sure when you're allowing your supervisors to allow groups that you need to look at the version. If you have your employees, I'm just a standard employee and you're using the locations and Costco's or equipment group, you do not need to mess with the view sets. You just need to make sure that box is checked in the show this in the mobile app. And this as an employee, this is what I'm going to see. So I'm going to see the locations and then I'm going to be able to go into the, the locations um, that are visible to me. After 2.634, you'll just be able to see the locations that you give permissions to. I'm just gonna clock into group A and then I'm only going to have those options for me to clock into. Same thing with cost codes. Um, when I clock, when I click into a certain cost code group, I only have those to select from. So it kind of helps your employees not to clock into the wrong locations. That's to me why I think naming these conventions are very important. So your employees know, you know, if they're on the demolition crew, you're going to list a Costco group demolition, and then you're going to list all the Costco's that they can only do in that type of cost code. If I'm a maintenance worker, then you're going to put maintenance and only stuff like that. So it helps to keep track of your employees so they can clock into the correct and location without having to scroll through like maybe 20 cost codes, 20 locations. So great way to organize your locations and, and cost codes for your employees to clock in and out of. Okay. Now, if you want your supervisors to be able to clock in a group of employees, um, let's say I've, uh, um, I have like five employees, a couple things that does need to happen. You need to enable the clock four underneath the security roles and on the mobile tab side. You want to enable crew confirmation permission because this will allow the supervisor if somebody didn't show up that day or they're out sick then this allows them not to clock that person in but everybody else even though that person's part of their group so for that example if somebody didn't show up i can uncheck them they're still part of that group i didn't remove them or anything i just didn't clock them in okay so let's kind of take a step by step on how this looks. So I'm going to go into security roles and then I'm going to go down to manage and I'm going to check box clocking in and out for other employees. That will be, give me my clock four icon on the mobile app. Caution you on edit the clock in and out time. A lot of people want to do this. If you do that, then you, the supervisor on that mobile device will have to manually sync the mobile app each time for those records to show up on the connect dashboard. So a lot of times we have it set right when they clock in, it's automatically set to the dashboard. So you have a real time view of the time card. And that's what I would suggest you do here. If he accidentally clocks in somebody or for, you know, clocks out a little bit later, it's easy for the administrator to correct those than for the supervisor to remember to sync his device every clocking in and clocking out. I get a lot of questions on this, so I wanted to kind of take a minute to go over what that means. Okay, so I'm a supervisor. I want to clock in my crew. I'm going to go to the clock four icon. I'm going to choose employee or crew, and it's gonna show me the crews that have I have access to on my view set, right? I'm going to choose red team, and then it's gonna show me all the employees that belong to that group. I can then clock in everyone, 
or as I was saying a minute ago, let's say Ash was not there. I can uncheck Ash and I can clock in Matt and Hans, okay? And then when I go back to clock out, Ash is still there. I didn't remove him from the group. He's still there. I'm just choosing not to clock him in because he's not here. So once I've chosen everybody, clock in and everybody is clocked in. One thing to note, when you are using the clock for feature, if you have your employees taking their picture when they are clocking in and out, and or if you have a geofence restriction that not allowing your employees to clock in if they're until they get inside the geofence or or if you give out a warning. If you're doing the clock for, that is overriding those permissions. So what does that mean? So if I'm clocking in Ash, Matt, and Hans, there will be no picture because you are putting that responsibility on me as a supervisor to say that all these people are currently here and I am clocking them in. So you want to make sure you trust your supervisors to clock in these employees. They will, the supervisor will choose a location. So if you have a location group, they will choose a location group, cost code. They completely clock in for their crew and group. I can also then visually see where if I'm, have view sets for another group, but I'm not clocking them in, I can visually see on the mobile app where that crew is. That's that show the view groups in mobile. So I have that option to also see other groups that I am assigned to, don't necessarily have to clock them in. Okay, so I hope that helps out a little bit. It is a great feature if you have people you know, construction and you just want people to clock in and go, but you it does put responsibility on your supervisors and it does do away with any face front or geofencing restrictions. Okay, so I think we are there. So something to look forward. So after the first of the year, we're gonna go through security roles because I went through a couple steps here in security roles. And I think that's another thing that we get a lot of questions here because we very distinctly divide our security roles. One strictly for the connect side and one strictly for the mobile side. So we're really gonna dive into both of those. So then I think a lot of people that struggle with security roles after that, it will click and they'll be like, okay, this is fabulous. So we will save that for after the after the new year. And so I will take any questions if we have any. Wow, Shannon, that was really great information. Thank you so much for thoroughly going through all of that. We do not have any questions as of yet. Give you a minute here um, if any of you want to put, type in any questions. Otherwise, um, as you know, you can always reach out, right, Shannon? Yes, you can always reach out to Samantha or myself. If you start playing with this feature and you find out, oh, yep, I'm not sure, always reach out to us. And also never forget to go to the help and support site for any supporting articles. Great way to help for information. Good call out. Support Central is amazing. There's so much great stuff out there. Well, we don't have any, so I think we can just wish everybody a wonderful holiday season and we will see you. What's our next training, Shannon? What's the next one coming up? It is on January 4th and we're going to go through security roles. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we will see you all then. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for attending. Happy holidays. Be safe and be healthy. Bye. Bye-bye.